Welcome to the Inside Silverstone podcast, a business-focused podcast covering all things tech, engineering and innovation. Hosted by me, Chris Broom, a huge tech, motorsport and gaming fan, and also the owner of Longhurst, a firm of lifestyle financial planners and independent financial advisors located in Silverstone, Northamptonshire. This is a series of unscripted and unpolished conversations with leading business owners, thought leaders and high-tech talent where we discuss their experiences within the Silverstone business and motorsport region. We will also be asking them to share their knowledge, insight and their thoughts on the future just for you. If you're looking to learn more about the Silverstone high growth region and commercially connect with like-minded peers, you've definitely come to the right place. Welcome to Inside Silverstone. Welcome to the next edition of Inside Silverstone. My name is Chris Broom and I'm your host. Today I am delighted to welcome back to the show Dolores Sanders from Total Control Pro. Dolores, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure to come on, even virtually. Virtually, yes, as we're doing. So we're recording, we're all remote and I am. My background's a little bit different, as everyone will notice. We're at our lawyer's office in central London today in, uh, in Holborn. And uh, so this is the backdrop, so forgive me. But Dolores, um, as we're doing with everybody for this series, it's a special COVID catch-up, which is where we are catching up with uh, old friends uh, and also new ones, people that we're meeting within the community in the sort of broader, wider sense. Um, so the purpose of today is a sort of short, sharp, fun uh, energetic 10 minute chat about you, COVID, Total Control Pro, and any sort of cool projects that you might be working on. So, first obvious question is how are you, the team, and the family since sort of March lockdown? How's it all been going your end? Um, the team is great, actually. Um, we, you know, we, the minute the call came, you know, if you can work from home, do. We're a tech company, essentially. You know, although we're based at the Innovation Centre in Northampton, we could quite easily up sticks and move home. Um, and um, we had a digital systems in place anyway. So that was fairly simple. Um, and everyone has stayed well. Um, we put some good stuff in place to keep connected with the team. So we have sort of daily team meetings and a bit of fun and backdrop competitions and all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, generally all very, very well and, 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 uh, and building as well. So we have added a few more team members to the team, but working from home. So I'm looking forward to meeting them in reality. Yeah. So let's talk, talk about that. So before we get onto customers and clients and stuff, so you've added six or seven new people to the company during COVID. Yeah. Well, a couple were already due to start and we just, you know, we, we knew we needed them. So we weren't going to let that, let them go. Um, as you know, we're big investors in people. We have a good apprenticeship program. So we've had two apprentices graduate in July and we knew we wanted to bring someone in sort of with them so that they could start to now, you know, be the Yoda for, for our uh, for the new, new um, apprentices. Mm. Um, so those guys came on board. Um, a couple of other new tech team, not apprentices, you know, senior tech team and also a new um, business development manager and... Um, and uh, marketing manager as well. So, so across the board, expanded the team, which has been very interesting. You know, just getting to know them, knowing them just face to face, but sort of just kit and equipment and getting them up to speed with who we are and what we do as well has been, has been challenging, but it's, it's worked well. And so some of these people you haven't actually physically met face to face, it's all been done virtually. Yeah. And until they got cameras, we, they were just voices with, you know, a double letter on the uh, on the teams thing um we are now you know seeing everyone by camera but no we've never actually met but actually that's nothing new for total control pro i think i once told you uh, one of our senior founders um i didn't meet him for the first five years of the company because he was just kind of in his in his cave in dover building our product so um yeah we're used to working that way <laughs> Fantastic. How, uh, how have your customers found COVID? What's been the sort of general consensus and feedback from them? Because I know some of them because they're friends and clients of ours as well. So how's it all been going with them? Um, I think, you know, the very beginning that was all, you know, as you know, it's completely uncertain. We found about 20% of our clients um, have really struggled. Um, have had to sort of almost, if not shut down completely, um, really go on to skeleton staff and, 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 and needed a bit of support from us. And, you know, we were quite happy to do that. Um, the other 80% actually of those, I'd suppose, you know, half of them thrived. 
pivoted, started producing things that were needed. Um, we had a US company producing PPE who used to do sportswear. So we supported them in flipping that. Um, we've got a good couple of customers make um, hygienic equipment and surfaces and stuff. So they were obviously very, very busy. Um, and the others have just kind of podded along, you know, gone on to sort of um, part, you know, part-time shift management with their clients and that side of things. What we found is, uh, is they have all reached out to us. Um, we've been pretty key uh, business system to keep them going because we provide remote access to what's going on. Um, and they could still access data even if they were in shutdown. So um, we've just sort of shifted how that focus is, um, made a couple of adjustments um, so that they could um, adapt to what was going on. Um, but all in all, in pretty good shape. Cool. Um, and what about products? So um, what's been the evolution of the, the, the services and products that you, you're delivering now? Oh, very good. So, I mean, one of the key things is although we've been supporting our current customers, we've added a couple of new customers into the process, but there hasn't been a big commercial um, requirement from our resources. So we'd started our Innovate um, research and development project uh, in the beginning of the year, and the planned delivery of that was, was March next year. We've mm -hmm. actually been able to put many more resources behind it, get some good beta clients of which, you know, um, our good friends at Silverstone Composites, who we absolutely love, are, are a key part of that, um, that beta program, and, um, and actually bring the product forward. So we're due to launch, um, soft launch to the 1st of September now. So it's a six-month advancement of what's needed. And I think, actually, I'm really glad we've been able to do it because I think now manufacturers, even more, the appetite for digital transformation is definitely there now. Um, mm -hmm. Before, it was a nice-to-have. Now it's a must-have. You know, they need to manage people on the shop floor. They need to have access to what's going on. They need to be able to, to be flexible in their, in their, in their working practices. Um, and we definitely facilitate that. So I think the new modules we've got coming out. So we've always focused on tracking the technology and the process on the shop floor for manufacturing. We've now added in inventory management, sort of, so you've got warehouse management, inventory management connected to that. Customer management, so not a CRM or that sort of side, but actually... If a customer places an order like, you know, for 10 houses worth of windows and something happens, that order can be managed. Any replacement parts, any um, refer, um, engineering, all of that kind of non-conformity issues can be managed as well, which often has an impact on capacity. Some basic capacity planning integrated with machines. So we've got some machine learning and some higher level reporting in place. Um, and then we've also expanded out our connection with other systems. We've realized through COVID, you know, digital transformation is, you know, they talk about the industrial revolution. And for me, it's not a revolution. It's an evolution. You know, it's not smart to throw everything out and put new stuff in just for the sake of it. So we've built a platform to, to allow us to take what's working from current business systems and integrate it with our platform so that we can start to manage the change and transformation process in a much more integrated way so that the results are shown up quickly and, um, and teams can do that from, you know, whether they're working face-to-face -face or virtually this way, they can start to implement that change more effectively as well. Um, so we're really excited about the new platform, as you can possibly tell. Good, good, good. And, and um, from a um, time to uh, research, develop and, uh, and think up new ideas and, and, and look into them. Have you had time during the COVID last few months to, to do that? Or have you been sort of all gung ho looking after customers? It's been, you know, the, so we knew what we were developing. So that's what we focused on. We have had um, some exciting developments. So we're working with a consortium of three other companies now. So that collaboration, I know my three C's was my thing on my podcast, um, but that collaboration has really come in. So we're working with a machine control system, a digital consultants um, for manufacturing um, and a robotics and automation company. And so we believe that with the four of us, we actually have some of the big answers to some of the big questions around smart factory. Um, and I just today saw a sneaky peek of the sort of digital twin that they're building to demonstrate this. But um, hopefully I'll be able to share it with you um, sometime soon. But that's a great collaboration in place. Exciting, exciting yeah. stuff. Um, cool. Um, so that's a lot. You guys have been really, really busy, which is exciting. <laughs> New products coming to, to market, even more exciting collab 
collaborating with uh, with other businesses really exciting uh, what else I, you know, i've got two other questions to ask to which close off our interview but what else whilst we've got you on air dolores and i love chatting to you what, what else do you want to talk about anything else that, that that comes to mind i think um you know this people talk about unprecedented we haven't seen this before it's not been there before you know i i absolutely agree with that and i more than ever, I see that the opportunity for UK manufacturing is huge now. You know, we were starting to onshore, we were starting to manage supply chains, and we were starting to manage resources more effectively. And actually, what's showing up is much more commitment to that. And that's not just good from an economic perspective, but it's good from, you know, if we're managing the resources that we have in this country and the resources of the planet more effectively, I think that's really exciting. So while I have nothing to do with the health side of COVID, the impact of it, I actually have not even, I've not experienced that at all with anyone close to me. So I'm very blessed with that. But I do think that there's some some really, really positive stuff coming out for UK manufacturing as a whole and for our resource management. Good. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think it's even wider than that, right? Society, communities, both business and personal. It's, uh, yeah, you're right. COVID's horrendous. And, you know, we, we've, you know, the law firm I'm here now, one of the senior lawyers passed from COVID. And so there's just, it's, it's horrible. But as a community, we're all coming together. I'm seeing the Silverstone Technology Cluster becoming closer uh, yeah. through quizzes and events and all sorts of other stuff plus obviously the PPE support, so people on site getting involved in that and, and, and supporting the, the, the NHS and the healthcare system. So, yeah, I, th- I totally agree. And, and clearly from what you're saying there as well, from manufacturing and uh, uh, future uh, future growth for, for, for all businesses involved. So really, really good. Dolores, brilliant as always to get you on. I appreciate this is a sort of quick fire, um, sort of COVID catch up, but that's the point. It's just for, for a quick natter. Two last questions. So, Life beyond COVID. So let's pretend it's 2021. There's a vaccination. We're all clear. We're all fine. What are you looking forward to doing the most? Oh, me? It's going to live theatre. My husband bought me 12 theatre experiences this year for Christmas last year. And guess what? We've done two of them. Oh, no. So I've got a big bank of things to do. And I love live music, live theatre. People. Being around people is, yeah, it's amazing. And I think that's the biggest thing I miss. There's that kind of energy. What's your favourite um, West End show? Um, Hamilton, I think, at the oh, moment. Do you know what? I started watching that, and uh, I need to finish it. I got up to the, I got up to the interval, and I just forget that these things are two and a half, two, two hour forty yeah. long. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic, though, isn't it, Hamilton? Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. I've seen it live, and I've now watched it on the um, the National Theatre live streaming, which again has been amazing. The, the, yeah. What they've what they've done to sort of keep us connected to the arts, I think, has been really, really great. Yeah, bravo. Agree, agree. Right, final question. This one's a bit of a weird one. You're going to probably <laughs> message me afterwards and go, Chris, why do you ask me that question? But, drum roll. Laura Sanders. Mm. What is the king, or indeed queen, of crisps? For me, it's got to be vegetable crisps. I okay. love a beetroot, a bit of beetroot crisps and mixed veg parsnip crisps. Yeah, that's the thing. If I get where, a packet where, of those, no one else sees them. Where do you buy those from? I've never, I don't, <laughs> I've never seen those. I can, get, I can even get them in Aldi, so, you know. <laughs> well, you can definitely buy pea crisps in Aldi because my Louise loves pea crisps, which I just oh, think yeah, they're, they're horrendous. good too. They're horrendous. They, sh- they stink, but they're at the checkout. So when I do the shopping, I always put four bags in for as a little treat. <laughs> Wow, vegetable crisps. I wasn't expecting that. Beetroot flavour. There we go. Oh, yeah. Love it. Healthy, tasty, earthy. I get it. Really, really good. (laughs) Right, that's it. Dolores Sanders from Total Control Pro. Thanks for being a good sport and coming on the show again. Uh, Clearly, look forward to catching up with you soon and um, hopefully get you back on the show again uh, in due time to talk about other cool things that you're working on. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Chris. Take care. The Inside Silverstone podcast is produced by the team at Longhurst for the benefit of those with a passion for all things tech, engineering and innovation. For more information, please visit longhurst.co.uk forward slash Inside Silverstone, whilst also remembering to give us a 5 out of 5 star rating on iTunes. Please note that neither Chris Broom or Longhurst work for Silverstone Park, Silverstone Circuit or Silverstone Technology Cluster.